meeting of the City of Albany Historic Resources Commission. Uh, my name is John Myers. I'm the chair of the commission. Um, we will be uh, inviting comments from the audience. Anyone who has signed in or uh, is uh, uh, logged into this Zoom meeting, uh, we would ask that anyone offering a public comment that uh, you keep it to the uh, topic at hand and limit the duration of your comment to three minutes. Um, I will do a roll call. I can see most people, but we'll go ahead and do a roll call just to uh, indicate uh, presence. Um, Commissioner Kaplan? Here. Uh, Commissioner Pinckney? Oh, there it is. They just unmuted me. Well, I see Lee is there. He's logged in. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Hacker? Here. Commissioner Garrity? Here. <laughs> Several times here. Uh, Commissioner McEnany? I'm here. Um, Commissioner Rice, have you phoned back in? He has not. Okay. We'll just wait. And I believe Aaron Tobin is not able to join us because she doesn't have connectivity where she is. Um, okay, and then representing the planning office, Aaron Glennon is in attendance and Amy Levine representing the law department is also in attendance. Um, we have a quorum, so we can proceed with our public meeting. Um, the uh, uh, case before us this evening is Nine Thurlow Terrace in the Washington Park Historic District. And this is a seeking a certificate of appropriateness to construct a rear two-story addition. Um, I would ask the uh, um, applicant to introduce themselves and present their project and what they're uh, seeking to do. Thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, Faraz Khan. I know some of the people here. I recognize Jack, of course, and Aaron. Um, so uh, essentially, my wife and I bought Nine Thurlow Terrace uh, about a year ago. It was previously a law firm, uh, the law firm of Rifkin Radler. We um, acquired the house and uh, it again, it was used as a, as a law office for many years. Uh, we thought it would be interesting to take one of these old historic buildings, renovate it, restore it, and turn it back into a single family home. So uh, we did that. We moved in earlier in the year. Uh, with the hopes that uh, extended family, uh, specifically my parents and my mother and father-in-law would eventually move in with us um, as uh, they've been having some medical issues and um, th they're just getting a little bit older. Um, after numerous discussions um, and realizing that they were reluctant to move in with us, uh, they admitted that uh, although they were happy to uh, be close to us. They still wanted to maintain some independence while they were still able. Um, so they had asked if we were able to build uh, separate units for them on the property adjacent to the property. Uh, if, if that was a, a possibility, they said that uh, that would be ideal for them. Uh, my father-in-law is an architect in New York. He's been uh, unfortunately in full renal failure for the past uh, four years and his health uh, is declining. Um, in his current residence uh, in New Jersey, outside of New York, um, he's just been having challenges uh, with stairs, with mobility in general. So we had thought uh, with this addition that we built, uh, you would essentially come in uh, at street level. We would lower the driveway from where it is now, about four feet, so that the basement, um, the basement of the existing structure. Uh, right now, it uh, is only about three and a half feet below grade. Uh, we'd essentially excavate so that it's at the same level 
as uh, Thurlow Terrace. And you'd basically drive in at street level to a basement, which again, if you, um, you know, if, if you go across the driveway from left to right, uh, you're almost even with the level of Thurlow Terrace if we excavate down. Uh, what we had in mind was uh, a parking uh, garage uh, underneath with uh, a staircase and um, a small one floor elevator to go from the garage up to the two uh, second floor units. I'm sorry, not second floor, they would essentially be a uh, first floor uh, matching the existing house. Um, essentially, we thought if uh, they had that access, it would be easier for them. Uh, each of the units would be two bedrooms, uh, two bathrooms, with the master bathroom being uh, fully ADA compliant. Um, and just to preserve the, uh, the aesthetic of the house, uh, we didn't want the addition um, at, uh, at the first floor level um, to be sandwiched against the building. Uh, we thought that it would be tasteful to have uh, a nice courtyard between the existing house um, and the two additional units. Um, and the entire new structure, uh, we were thinking to do it in a uh, red brick face. Um, we deal with Geldwin uh, for a lot of the historic projects that we do. So they would build uh, custom wood frame windows uh, to match uh, those of the existing home. Uh, and we'd have a railing um, and front porch going across the house to connect to the existing structure um, in a style that would match what's existing. But that's that's essentially uh, what, we, what we had in mind. Okay, um, Aaron, did I see a site plan flash? Yes. Um, because there wasn't one included in the, the packet that we saw. Yeah, it was, I um, had missed it. Um, it was an earlier submission um, that came in prior to the application and I added it to the presentation, but it wasn't in the packets. Okay, all right. And the, as you face the house from Thurlow Terrace, then the driveway, it looks like you have driveways on both sides of the house. The driveway currently wraps around. Um, it would, we would end up with uh, one driveway going to the garage. Uh, as you're facing the house on the right-hand side, that's the driveway that I'm proposing we lower uh, to uh, the basement level. And on the left side, we would leave the existing driveway. It just wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't connect. And how far along is the uh, the planning for this? And uh, it, it seemed like the drawings are not even really concept or schematic drawings as would have been prepared, been prepared by an architect. So whose drawings are we seeing and how so, far along is the planning and how so, will the design be handled? So we've already had a, a meeting with uh, the planning board and I, I think Aaron can uh, maybe confirm that. Um, we, for the purposes of, of this meeting, it was my understanding that uh, what uh, we, we were to present was a, um, a, a site plan, photos, um, and a floor plan for the additional units if there's more information uh, specifically that's required, I'm, I'm happy to uh, provide that. Yeah, generally we would like to see, you know, full plans and elevations. Full um, construction plans? Um, well, design plans, plans. Okay, there should be additional elevations that were sent. So um, if you, I'm, I, I don't know who's controlling the slide chat. I am. Okay. Right. I am. Yep. Uh, so if, if we if we go back uh, previous to this, uh, this this essentially facing uh, this is what would be facing uh, Washington Park. 
if you're in the park looking at the side view, um, to the left is the existing structure. Uh, then we have uh, the new garage, and then the two units uh, above that. And this faces Washington uh, Park Lake? Yes. Okay. Although, I mean, there, there's a berm. It's, the garages are going to be mainly recessed, but the new first floor, the, the two units would be uh, somewhat visible from, from the park. Okay, I, well, uh, the information we have at hand right now is really a, a rough concept or conceptual approach to what you're proposing to do. And it, it does address the, uh, the lot coverage and the uh, general massing of the uh, proposal. But again, um, to determine the appropriateness, we would be looking for more detailed design drawings to um, accurately depict and uh, uh, the, uh, the proposed addition and how it abuts or doesn't abut the existing structure. Um, I guess to get into some of the detail questions, the proposed courtyard or green space that you have between the uh, existing home and the two apartments, that would be a, um, a green roof on top of the garage? We would use uh, metal decking above the garage. The garage would basically be a, a 12 inch uh, poured wall uh, going around. Uh, we are planning on using uh, steel decking and then uh, installing drains in the center. Um, a, uh, waterproofing membrane, uh, and then we would uh, we'd plant the lawn above that. But this would be atop the, uh, the roof of the- uh, Yes. It would, the garage or the plinth that everything, everything is built upon. Exactly. Um, but because Thurlow Terrace is a hill sloping down towards the park, the uh, courtyard would essentially be at grade with the, um, you know, with, with what's remaining of the uh, the parking lot uh, facing the carriage house. Okay, so this is tucked back into the or excavated back into the the hillside somewhat. Yes. yes. Um, and set down in. Yes. So also the two units they'd be walking out. The rear doors would would walk out at grade. Uh, facing the park, obviously, uh, they're, they're, they're um, about nine feet higher. And then the elevators to provide service down to the, uh, to the garage. garage level. Yes. Okay. And then there is an existing carriage house behind. Yes. And that, that's all part of the, the property as well. Yes. Correct. Was there any thought, you have a, a, it appears to be from the massing diagram, a flat roof on the uh, two apartments uh, on top of the garage. That's correct. Um, whether there was some thought of a, a roof profile that- um, we somewhat with the existing you know, structures, although you have two different structures. You've got a gable roof on the uh, carriage there's, house. There's a hip roof on the existing and then a gable yeah. on the carriage house. Yeah. Um, we, we thought having a flat roof uh, basically would be a glue down rubber membrane uh, with roof drains. Uh, we thought that would, um, aesthetically it may look a little bit nicer. It would also protect the view uh, that you have from the, the dormers of the carriage house. And uh, our neighbors on Englewood uh, from the, uh, the second floor 
um, it, it would still preserve uh, the, the limited view that, that they had of the park. Okay. That, that was the intention. So the intent is to really tuck this down into the landscape as much as you possibly yes, can. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, is there, and there appear to be quite a few garage bays, I guess only you can answer the question if there's a need for that much garage space, but uh, it seems to be a fairly substantial um, element. I know it does, you know, act as the plinth for the uh, apartments. I'm this having room. a hard time understanding. Well, I mean, it would I'm conceptually understanding the project, but I don't think the drawings, these these block drawings we have are really sufficient for understanding the building. That was why my question earlier is, maybe these were prepared, maybe you partially answered it and these were prepared for the planning board, but they don't, for my purposes, they don't feel sufficient for really understanding the details and the materials and, the impact on the adjacent building in the park. And so I'll go back to the question is, is there an engineer and architect involved and in will they be preparing elevation drawings with details so we can understand? As, 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 as I mentioned previously, um, so I'm, I'm a builder by profession, I'm a builder and engineer. I'm the principal of Khan Construction and Development. I've been uh, a builder for about 17 years now. My Will with us. Uh, he's he's an RA. He's he's an architect in Manhattan. Uh, he's the one that prepared the drawings, and he would be preparing the construction set as well. Uh, again, if if I was, can you're cutting in and out? Can you just repeat your last sentence as to who is preparing the documents? Um, yeah, I said my my father. -in -law. Yeah, my father-in-law, he's a registered architect. Uh, heard these drawings as well. Okay, I'm sorry. I think we're, we're having a little yeah. connectivity um, problem. The facade and when... For us, you are frozen. Um, okay, am I still frozen or? I can hear you now. We can yeah. hear you now. Okay, okay. Okay, Aaron, are, are, are you? Yeah, you your connection is keeps going in and out. Um, we can see you, but we're having a hard time hearing you. Okay. I don't know if, if, okay. uh, if you want to try, try to move yeah move, or even if you want to try to sign back in again. I don't know if that would help. I'll, I'll try to sign right back in if that's okay. 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 We will be here.
Uh, Aaron, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I apologize. I apologize for that. I believe the last question that you guys, uh, th that was presented was in regards to the architect. And uh, my answer was that um, my father-in-law is a registered architect in Manhattan. He prepared these plans and he would be preparing the full construction documents. Aaron, you said this went before the planning board? So this did not go before the planning board. We had a meeting with the planning department. Um, okay. Myself, Chris Spencer, and Brad Glass met with Faraz um, to kind of do a pre-concept um, meeting uh, for the proposal. Um, I believe Brad is still looking into um, whether this needs um, a major or minor conditional use permit, which would require it either to be administratively approved or go before the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the first kind of um, land use uh, review that it was determined he needed. Um, Aaron, uh, Chris indicated that it was an approved use um, and that was not required. Okay. Uh, oh, Chris, we, Chris Spencer, that is. Right. Yeah. And I believe it was because the um, the approved view, yes, the approved. And we're, um, we're, we're actually decreasing the impervious footprint. We're right. taking from the but, parking lot and um, we're putting back more green space than we're taking. We can have a discussion offline. I believe that when Chris had determined that it was an approved use, it was that the garage would be slightly pulled back and there would be um, either like a covered walkway um, yes. or some sort of delineation between the residents and the proposed yes. garage addition. That's um, correct. So that would need to be reflected in the plans at some point. Absolutely, that's correct. Um, but if it as it moves forward without that type of delineation, I believe it would have to go to the planning board. And but we can have that discussion offline to sure. make that determination. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Well, and again, I think that um, the the level of detail that we would be looking for would be certainly uh, more fully developed to uh, um, just so everyone had a a good understanding of the, the detailing and how it's going together and how the massing all uh, works within the landscape and some uh, elevations that would even photo elevations that would um, illustrate from different vantage points what impact this would have on the view shed because we are dealing with a, a very prominent park and um, you know while I understand the the sensitivity that you're expressing and trying to tuck this in um, behind berms and into the landscape as much as possible um, we need to see some a, a clear demonstration of that as a, uh, a developed design. So for clarification, uh, you're looking for, I, I guess, more details in the rendering. Um, I mean, we can prepare additional renderings, but are you, are, are you looking for us to create renderings uh, reflecting the park and how it would look from, you know, like a, a 50 foot or a hundred foot distance as well? Well, I think we, we just need to understand what the, the massing, how that is uh, impacting the, uh, the park. So, you know, even from the, the road across from the lake to see what, um, what, if anything, you would see. I think it, it's important to have that understanding because this certainly potentially could change the landscape or it could be uh, very well disguised and uh, almost go unnoticed. 
but it's, it's not clear with the materials that we have at hand. Okay, so if we took photographs, uh, different angles from the park, and then we overlaid them with, um, you know, showing existing, and then we overlaid them with renderings showing the proposed views. Uh, is that something that would be sufficient? So I think that would be very helpful. I'll let other commissioners uh, answer the, the question as well. And I think Aaron certainly has um, information on what constitutes a submission package that would be um, at a point where it could receive complete review by the Historic Resources Commission. John, is it fair to say that it's really two types of information? One, to deal with the visual impact on the park. That's where some of the photographs from the public um, areas of the park and then the the um, inf uh, sketches or renderings, if you will, showing the impact, but that's about the view shed. That to some degree is separate from, I think the second item, which, which yeah. I was mentioning, and I think you're referring to, which are um, basic elevation drawings that are developed to the extent that we can really understand the details and the materials and, um, and, and therefore the impact. So it would be, somewhere between a schematic or a design development level of elevation drawings, I think is what we would be expecting to see, separate from the, the photographs and the other materials showing the visual impact from the park, two separate items. So you would want elevation drawings, floor plan, let's say like dimensioned elevation drawings, floor plans, Note it with um, material specifications, like a jet. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So, are, I mean, are you looking for a full construction set then? No, not necessarily. Yeah, sorry, Marilyn, go ahead. No, no, that's why I was trying to ask initially. I think that uh, you know every architectural firm is going to define differently what they consider schematic design or concept design or design development drawings. All of those come before the actual construction drawings, as, as you know, probably. So um, short of the full construction drawings, the full construction documents will be uh, somewhat less refined and less detailed elevation drawings. So if you present to whoever, to your father-in-law, whoever's preparing these, that they'd like to, see, we'd like to see basic schematic or design development drawings for the elevations. I think so that, you, you want essentially uh, elevation drawings for the four sides uh, of the structure. And then additionally, you're looking for, again, maybe along the lines of what I proposed, uh, photos, from the park, maybe from the roadway in the park, um, showing the the property, and then those same photos overlaid with this uh, proposed new rendering. Is is, is that exactly exactly yeah. two separate? Yeah, okay. two separate things. Um, how, how detailed are are you expecting the uh, elevations? Well, they should, um, you know, describe the um, all of the the surfaces and the planes, uh, and change in plane that is proposed by the the various um, construction assemblies, um, you know, reflective of the general level of detail that is intended, and then annotated to identify all of the. Um, the major materials of construction. I know it's been described with brick and uh, you know other other elements, but we would like to see where those transitions take place from one material to another. And for the existing house, I and and anyone else can chime in. You could probably have a a good. Um, good photographs of the house suffice or serve as the basis for how to represent the addition and how it's attaching 
or uh, or not attaching to the house, how it um, uh, addresses the existing building. John, let me make sure that I that I heard you correctly. So what you're saying, which I agree, is that the elevation drawings for the proposed addition need to also include the that elevation drawing for the existing house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the existing house, I would, I'm, I'm expecting you're not looking for an extremely high level of detail of, of, of this structure, are you? Only as sufficient to understand the relationship of what you're going to show us on the elevation drawing. Okay. I mean, meaning because you, you, you I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking of it from, from a, you know, uh, uh, it, time perspective. It should clearly show the connection between the existing structure and the proposed structure and how that will be made. Um, okay. That's going to be a very... No, Aaron, that's not yeah. a problem. And, and, and I think that's, that's reasonable, that that's not an issue at all. I just mean the existing house. Um, well, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's sufficient though, because we hate for you to come and then have to come back. I would think on other projects where we see new construction and additions, the height of the window sills, the height of the cornices, the floor to ceiling heights. So some additional information that lets us know how, for example, the new windows or the new floor to ceiling heights will relate to those on the existing. So it shouldn't just be a block drawing because that won't be, that won't give us enough information. Oh, I, I, I guess what I had meant was, so you have the actual photographs of the house to show what's existing. Uh, we'll, we'll match the style, but, uh, there's a lot of intricate details in, in the house itself. We're not expected to, to detail all of that. It's in, in enough to show how they tie it together. Is that a fair assumption? I think if you show the, the massing of the house, accurately depict the, the cornice line, sure. um, also the window openings, the as uh, Commissioner Kaplan mentioned that the sill height and the head height, because all of those things, they start to establish lines okay. of um, justification sure. for what you're proposing, and it may in, may really help inform how you um, fine tune the design of the addition. Okay. So you really you can't put an addition on a house without having pretty good documentation of the existing structure. Sure. It, again, I, 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 I apologize. Um, if I had understood these things uh, in advance, I, I thought those are typically more when the construction set is being prepared. Um, those, those are documented there, but I, I can uh, understand and appreciate where you guys are coming from and uh, we're, we're happy to, to work on preparing those. I think one difference is, is that if you would come to us with construction documents, it's a lot harder to make changes to a full set of construction documents than a <laughs> more conceptual elevation yes. drawing. So, yes. Yeah. We're trying to meet part way between the full <laughs> construction documents and understood. Understood. And a mass. Model. Yeah. We usually don't start those until we have, you know, a concept. But again, I completely understand where you guys are coming from. We're happy to prepare those. And I think we'd also you know, entertain uh, the comments from the other commissioners on the, the massing and the general concept, because obviously that is an important aspect of what we're looking at this evening. Um, again, I think if the, um, if it successfully is integrated into the landscape and is not, um, certainly isn't a, a visual intrusion on the park, then you know a lot can. Um, sure, and and I would I would hope not. Uh, as I said, this is our own personal residence. I've done a lot of uh, you know I build new houses professionally, but I've done a lot of restoration work, and uh, we would want it to be uh, tasteful. We would want to preserve the historic integrity of not only the house but the neighborhood. Um, so again, I, I appreciate where you're coming from. Any other comment, John? Please. Um, when I looked at the plans just at home here, I thought, oh my God, what a horrible idea to have five garages facing Washington Park. 
So I drove over there this afternoon and I walked around and I got a very different impression of what's going on. And now I hear it's even uh, different from that because if I were to stand down on the park road, I couldn't even see those garages. Uh, there's already a berm there and right. there's already trees that block if this building was standing, I doubt that I'd even see it, even in today's uh, world. And if the plans are the way they're described, are, are gonna have the garages going even deeper into the, uh, into the earth, that it's a, a lot more than just a mild ber a berm, it will do a lot to protect it uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the park's sake. I have a problem uh, with what I'm looking at. There's an inaccuracy here. Uh, I thought it was inappropriate. It looked like the, the base where the garages are was moved forward and was, uh, was next to the, uh, to the uh, uh, excuse me a minute while I get the words to get uh, the, uh, the porch. And then when I looked at the, uh, if you go on to the, a pot, the plot plan uh, where we have the green uh, there, see the difference? And I said, oh, that's not a problem. I see where the, uh, the masonry has been moved back and is, is closer, it's inside the, uh, the masonry of the historic uh, home. It doesn't jut out. And uh, if that's the case, then it's going to be recessed just a little bit. We can go back to the five, if we can go back to the five uh, parking garages. I'm uncomfortable with any of these uh, uh, 19th and early 20th uh, century buildings when they have a strong horizontal element. Uh, the windows and the doors all tend to be something that's very, uh, uh, very vertical. And I think the idea of the five uh, dry, uh, 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 garages uh, being like they are, they are a very strong horizontal, almost an industrial base to the uh, building. And I would think if the uh, left-hand corner of the proposed building uh, went all the way down at once to the ground level, uh, and then the uh, two remaining um, middle garage, or the two middle garages, we are the first garages, we call them one and two, were recessed even by a foot it would have a different identity. And I think as opposed to five in a row, which is a strong horizontal, almost an industrial design, if the first two were made different, recessed just a little bit and had a separate identity, and then it would take the remaining three numbers, uh, three, four, and five, so they're directly underneath the, the two buildings, I think that would, uh, that would make it clear that it's the, the basement to an extended building or buildings. I think the center line down the middle of the two upstairs buildings, uh, which are the residential areas, that line is uh, disruptive because it makes like it's, it's a type of very uh, uh, cheap construction that's been re, uh, has been put off grounds, uh, off uh, site and then put together. And I think that line uh, cheapens the quality of the building, uh, particularly in the uh, figurative shadow of the historic building to its left. But those were my two observations. Uh, having it jut out on the uh, bottom level uh, and making it come, according to this drawing, all the way up to the, uh, uh, up to the uh, uh, porches something doesn't work right. And I think if you took the green space that you're creating in between the two buildings and go in just a little bit to give it a separate identity as the base to the green space, as opposed to being a part of the base of the two, uh, the two apartments, I think it would, would look better. I, I, Jack, that's actually a good idea. Uh, and, and I think that, that that's fine. Uh, we're happy to do that. 
I think it helps also differentiate the the massing somewhat because it, it's looking like it's trying to be a very horizontal continuation of the ground level of the main house where you really want it to, you want to kind of mirror what's going on with the carriage house behind. You've got a, a separate massing and identity there. You've got the massing and identity of the existing building. And then you've got the two apartments that happen to have um, undercroft space that's used as a garage. So I think Jack's idea of pushing the, the, um, no, I think that I, 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 agree with I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. And thank you for that. I also see the merit in the flat roof. Uh, initially, you're thinking, well, uh, put in some kind of a low, uh, but uh, slanted roof. And the way you described it and the fact that it's a, a somewhat of a uh, c consideration of the people that back up from Englewood Place, I think the, uh, the flat roof design uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and actually, to be honest, <laughs> I, I think of the second floor, the, the bedrooms, um, you know, it, it would obstruct our view yeah. a little bit from the house so mm -hmm. there's almost a temptation to put in a, a green roof on top of that or decks on top yeah, of it. my father-in-law would have loved to do that yeah <laughs> um, I, I, I you know I, I i wasn't sure if we were ready for that at this point but yeah well uh, but he actually definitely brought that up keep well keep an option on it because you, you know there's a part of it that would be uh, structurally sound and wouldn't do damage it, it might be a fascinating thing to uh, overlook uh, uh, Washington Park and wouldn't even be seen by uh, people down on the ground level. Sure, sure. Are there any other comments from uh, fellow commissioners? Uh, I do know your children, and you might want to consider how safe it's going to be in that uh, open space inside, so we don't have small children falling off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I, I know you're thinking of finding a way so that uh, their grandparents can wander back and forth and, and join them in the house or have them uh, join. You know, them. Jack, I think one of the biggest issues I had uh, with the, well, the two issues I, I had with the rooftop uh, garden that that he had, and and that you're suggesting uh, is is drainage. We we obviously wouldn't want water intrusion uh, in the future, but but I think that could be addressed. And then the other thing is um, uh, the access to the roof. Uh, probably we would need to have the um, elevator go all the way to the roof in that situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, you know, because of accessibility and maybe not for now, but for, for the future, our, our, our uh, plan is, is for them to be able to age in, in, in place. Mm. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely uh, consider that. And uh, well, nothing has to be done all at once in, sure, in family, sure. but, uh, but I think you're going to need some kind of a safe barrier uh, for the children when they move toward the park in that open green space that you're putting in there, you're gonna to have to put something uh, for safety's sake. Yeah, the idea was to put a railing to match uh, the, the porch of the house. Yeah. But I think you're right. Uh, I mean, to have that larger area, uh, an enclosed area would be much more ideal. Um, so so I'll, uh, I'll, Discuss that with with um, you know with, with them when I when, when well, I just uh, just a railing that it's I'm, I like the open space and I think that uh, grandparents like the idea of a separate identity and it gives them uh, perhaps a secret courtyard type <laughs> of place in between the two uh, but I think if we're going to get an idea what it's going to be look like what it's going to look like when it's done uh, probably there should be a, a quick a quick sketch of some kind of a railing might be reset a little bit to keep a separate identity, but uh, you're never going to safely be able to put what you have here with a uh, certain drop off the edge of the 
uh, of the uh, the roof of the garages. So you sure. might just as well put in something, whether it matches or it doesn't. You're going to need something to to make that safe. Sure, sure. That'll be a code requirement anyway. That'll that should yeah, of course they bring us the elevation drawings. Based on of course, under code analysis. And it is yeah. labeled as a front porch, so I would have would have assumed that there would be a, a rail. Not really. Yeah. Um, and you, you may I, want to make it simpler too. It may not. It may not look right if you try and match it with white paint. You may want to have just a, a metal. It would be. Uh, not very intrusive to keep the two identities separate between okay. the new construction and the historic construction. Okay. Is is the the focus of the committee to uh, have there be more of a separation, or for there to be, um, you know, more, more of a a marriage, um, you know, so, so I, I guess unifying attributes between the two structures. I think that's, I don't think that's our job to tell you whether to fill it in or not. And you know the use. I'm just thinking that you know you're going to find some way to have people in inclement weather to go back and forth. Sure. And, uh, just like the railing in the front, you may also need something that people can uh, go through, whether it's a, uh, arcade or something like that, whether it's going to be weatherproof or not, somebody's sure. going to have to find a way for grandparents to go back and forth. And you might just as well do the construction at the same time. Sure, sure. Um, I have Lee Pinkney is having issues with his um, microphone. Um, and I do have a couple. Um, he has some comments um, and recommendations. Um, that I just want to put out there um, to reiterate on Commissioner Kaplan's comments. Um, he would recommend that you do produce um, drawings that show the existing historic structure with the columns, porches, and windows, showing the relationship between the existing structure and the proposed. Um, and he would recommend that there be um, delineation um, added between the first floor um, garage space um, so that there's a separation between the existing structure and the proposed addition. Um, and that there be further development um, and more information provided on the proposed materials um, but overall, um, he thinks it's a very good project, just needs some more um, refinement and more information from the applicant. Okay. I guess as I would say, I'm just looking forward to see uh, more detailed elevation drawings on all sides. It's exciting. So um, we're, we're going to work on preparing additional uh, drawings. Uh, what's the procedure from this point? Uh, we'll try to get those prepared as quickly as possible. Uh, we would submit them, and then we would have uh, a follow-up review. Is, is that? So the, um, the commission will need to take a motion tonight at the meeting. Um, they can uh, make a motion to approve approve of conditions, deny or defer an application. Um, and then you will take the recommendations from the commission. Um, most, I mean, it sounds like you will need to develop further drawings um, and then you can resubmit those drawings and we would, you know, if it is a full application, um, you'll be placed back on an agenda to come back for a, another formal review in front of the commission where they will take formal action. And, and is, I mean, is that typically required or would uh, administratively the commission be able to review the documents? In the um, I think in this case um, with the request for 
more developed um, drawings, you yes. will need to come back to the commission. Okay. We plan on meeting every two weeks. This isn't a, a once a month deal. Okay. Okay. So if we uh, produce the, the plans quickly, there, there's a chance that we could, um, we, we could meet again this month. In order to be on the agenda for um, September 16th, um, the agenda just went out today, uh, you would need to have fully developed plans to meet by Friday okay. um, in order to be on the agenda. So you would be looking at the October 7th meeting um, and the application deadline for that meeting is September 16th. Um, because this has already been noticed, there is a little bit, um, you can have a couple days, but really, um, if you could have developed plans back by September 16th, that would guarantee a spot on October 7th. Okay. Um, now, uh, again, we'll, pre we'll prepare documents showing uh, elevations from the four sides uh, showing uh, a proposed view uh, from the park. We'll show, uh, you know, the brick facade. We'll show the uh, trim work, the windows, uh, and we'll document as best we can the existing home. Um, aside from that, are there any other major concerns in terms of the, uh, the footprint, for example? Um, the, uh, I, I guess the, the concept of, of the project itself, are there any other uh, major comments or objections? Well, speaking for myself, I think that the concept as, as explained and after driving around the, the site and walking around it this afternoon. Um, I, I wish I knew you guys were coming. I would have loved to meet you and <laughs> explain in more detail. Oh, we're a stealth group. We <laughs> swoop down on a property individually, so you can't uh, can't corner us. Uh, no, um, I mean that wasn't the intent. It's just you no, know. No, I know. <laughs> right? um, but uh, no, I think uh, conceptually and from a, a massing standpoint, I think you've explained and it's you know sensitively integrated. I think we just want to. Uh, you know, further our understanding of what's uh, being proposed here. So, that, sure. you know, there's a, a comfort level and we're doing due diligence for the commission to uh, protect the historic resources of our community. I, of course, and that's a very important job. You'll also need to provide, um, I don't know if you, sorry, I apologize if I missed it, but you'll also need to provide um, further kind of more parsed out material specification information sure. with sure. the proposal. Okay. Um, I mean, for, for the brick, we usually use D'Agostino or Colony Block. Would you want samples of, of the brick we're using? Um, right now, not physical samples, but if you have the cut sheets for the um, material, that's, um, that's what's required. Okay. Well, I'll see what I can come up with in terms of that. The, the windows are not a problem. Uh, the trim is not a problem. Um, I'll see what I can do about the brick. One thing I don't understand is it's not not really sure. totally necessary here, but where's the front door when the grandparents come in and let's say they go through the other side on the ground level, the original ground level, where's the front door of the two uh, it's really like two little houses. Where so front door to the backyard or to the dry, the old driveway. So um, Aaron, I don't know if we, if you can flip back to the, uh, the, the, the floor, floor plan, plan rendering. Yeah. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. So uh, essentially what we were thinking was um, the, the, uh, they would have uh, from the living room, they'd have uh, French doors, basically window doors 
going onto the front porch. Okay. But their main point of entry would be um, if you look at the two master bedrooms, uh, yeah. if you just follow the hallway going back, uh, we'd have the elevator and uh, covered entry. That's where, you know, I assume that they would be uh, coming in. And uh, if you're looking at the elevator covered entry to the left of it is a walkway going mm -hmm. to the porch of the house. Uh, realistically, there, there's an existing elevator in the house. So uh, from the garage, I was thinking uh, we would have a door going into the basement of the existing house. Mm -hmm. So from the garage, they could also just walk across. And if it's, you know, snowing outside, they could just come from underneath. Okay. Yeah. Or you could stroll through the green space and enter from the front porch through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as long as it's not, you know, winter, <laughs> I think that would be nice. And then going back to the additional details, are, are there any materials? Again, we're using brick, we're, you know, planning on using, uh, you know, gelled one wood frame windows. Are there any, you know, materials that uh, any anyone on the uh, committee would find uh, problematic or any things you want us to stay away from within the normal, you know, I guess, norms of uh, historic. I think what you've described is is fine. I'm just looking through the application. I thought there was some mention of the uh, stone trim or limestone sills. I'm not sure if I'm thinking of something else. For for the um, the sills of the windows and for the headers, uh, we're planning on using stone. Okay, and that's that of the existing house. What will the pillars be made of? Are they wood or are they uh, masonry or what? Um, I, I was planning on using uh, wood or, I mean, I would have loved to use uh, vinyl um, just, just from the maintenance perspective, but uh, what I was thinking uh, to do was use wood. And, and they're obviously just decorative, but that, that, that's what we were thinking. Well, one more thing, if they're gonna be walking through that front door, uh, porch, there's gotta be a railing all the way across. There will, there will. It's, uh, you know, I apologize, it's not uh, explained, but there, by code, there would, you know, be a railing yeah. going across. No, I think what you've described sounds fine. I mean, it certainly is compatible and in the, the vocabulary of the materials on the house, on the original historic house, so. Procedurally, Aaron, should we table this pending another review or? I, I would, my recommendation to the commission would be to make a motion to defer the application um, and then put on that that you would recommend that the applicant submit the information, drawings, materials, um, what you would need um, at the next review. So, okay. Um. If there aren't any other comments, um, I would entertain a motion then to that effect. So move. And that motion would, um, you know, carry the uh, the requirement for the uh, more detailed drawings. Um, elevation views, uh, photo perspectives that would identify the impact of the addition from the, uh, the park. Um, certainly uh, a little more delineation or separation between the existing building and the, the massing and the, the new element of the, uh, the 
uh, two apartment addition and garage beneath. Um, and a, I guess, a little more development to the site plan so we have a pretty good understanding of, of the, um, the grading okay. around the, uh, the building. I guess we have a motion and somewhat augmented. Um, is there a second? I see Commissioner Hacker. I will second raise, that. <laughs> raise his hand. All right. Um, I second that motion. Okay. Thank you. Um, Aaron, do we have any members of the public who would like to address this application? I, um, no. Um, unless Pam, if you want to raise your hand, if you have any comments, I don't, I don't believe, no, we don't have anything. Okay. Um, well, I will uh, call the motion to uh, a vote. Um, John, just give me one second. I'm going to turn on Lee and Norman real quick. Okay. Sorry. Lee, are you there? Hi, Lee. I can't believe after the whole damn hour, I'm, 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 I'm being heard. Did Hi, you get Lee. my text? I Hi, did. Everybody. And your, your information was shared. Let me just see if I can get Norman on. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> so can I vote? Hold on. Sorry. I can't. Okay, that's all right. No, you can. You can, oh, you can oh, vote. You can vote. Hold on. Don't run away. I for for whatever reason I cannot unmute Norman. Okay, I can't get I can't get Norman on mute it. So, all right, well, um, let's go ahead and, enough. and take a vote. Uh, we have a motion to. Um, well, well, can I say something that I think the project is a pretty good project. I mean, that that original building is huge. It's big. And um, the addition is just as big, but you know, it's, it, you know, it doesn't say you don't see anything from Thurlow. You see, you probably see it from the park, even though there's some trees between the driveway and the park itself. Uh, like I said, I, you've already gotten my comments. Um, I think there should be delineation between the two, um, and we need to look at material. Yep. And I don't know whether. They need, the applicant needs to provide a drawing of the original building with its columns and porches because maybe with the new design and the, and the actual image of the building, you know, it may be a little too much. Uh, it may, the, the column pilast design may be a little too much for that site. I don't know. Well, it'll all play out in the development of the drawings. Excellent. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All those in favor of the motion as stated, uh, please. Uh, let's see. Well, why doesn't any, anybody just say aye? Uh, I will. Aye. 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 All right. It's, I think we, uh, Aaron, did you 
take account there? Um, that would be six. Anonymous. Yep. Um, Without. Say this, Norman, if you have your headphones in, can you unplug them and see if this works? Nope. All right. So unanimous six. Okay. <laughs> six affirmative. So the motion is carried. And we look so forward to Norman indicates that he agreed we should add on to that under the technical circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. The, the motion is carried. We look forward to uh, further development and the next opportunity to see the project. Thank you all very much for your time. I uh, really appreciate the uh, consideration and uh, I'll get these drawings over to you as soon as possible. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what kind of drawings are we getting? Detailed drawings. <laughs> So detailed drawings, you uh, well, just details of the connection. Schematic level drawings, but more more detail, delineating, you know, the the details and the the planes and the massing of the building, of the addition. Okay. Laser. All right. And accurate representation adjacent to the existing um, okay. residents. All right. Windows yeah. maybe okay. on the east elevation. I don't know, railings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Design mm -hmm. features, exterior design features. <laughs> okay. Are y'all going to also talk about, and, um, is there some, was there any discussion about glass between the two? We're going to wait and see what we get, Lee. That's what we talked about. We didn't want to design it. Okay. Yeah, because I couldn't, I couldn't hear a goddamn thing. I'm, I'm sorry. in the background just waving, 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 and nobody oh, saw. Oh, sorry, you know. <laughs> sorry. Hey, no, it's my, it's, it's my error. I need to sit down with somebody and try to figure, um, get some help on this. And I tried to get some help, but came a little too late. So that's okay. If well, you want, Lee, if you want you. to call me, if you want to call me, I can review the discussions. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you a call tomorrow. No okay. Great thing. Okay, okay, great. Thank okay. you very much. All right, thank you. Um, are there any other things to come before the commission this evening? I believe so, there's been some development with uh, 105 South Lake Avenue. Yes. Um, okay. I have been working with the applicant since the site visits um, that John, uh, Commissioner Myers, Commissioner Hackner, and Commissioner Pigney had met um, met with the owner after the August fifth um, hearing. Um, he had another. Um, Mason come out who does historic restoration work um, to look at the porch. Um, the first, um, I'm not sure if he shared it with everybody, but the first um, contractor that he had come out who does historic masonry um, looked at it and was told him that it was um, to the point where um, trying right. to restore it was going to most likely be too much. Um, his best option would be to remove it. Um, the second contract mason that came out um, is giving him a quote of approximately $14,000 to retain and repair it. Um, so he is working with TAP to develop um, plans to look at replacement of the existing material with a new wood um, platform porch decking system um, with uh, um, looking at meeting the requirements that he'll probably be building the framing system, structural system out of pressure treated lumber and going back and refacing it um, with kind of a higher level skirting. 
Um, but uh, I think looking at, he, he has kind of informed me though, looking at his budget, um, retaining what's currently there based on the quotes that he's received um, and, the, and the contractors that he's had come out and look at it, um, it's just not feasible for him. Um, and that replacement with a wood type system is more um, viable. So I am waiting to get plans from him by the end of the week. Um, and once I have them, I will share them with the commission. Um, and I believe based on the discussion, I mean, I can't, I'm not 100% sure on this, um, but based off of kind of previous discussion, he, I believe he is looking to do kind of a simple roof system um, as part of uh, the proposal in order to protect, um, provide kind of weather protection um, and make it a more usable space for he and his family. So we'll be getting well, that once you get it. Once I get it, yeah. Okay. Be interesting to see it, that's all. Yeah. Is there anything, um, any more you can tell us, Aaron, about 52 North Pearl? How come he just, the owner, I can't remember who it was, uh, just decide to do something without letting you know and expecting it to be okay. Um, so, yeah, very good question um, that we asked them. Um, so we, Aaron Tobin brought this to my attention um, back in, in July is what I, when we had met with them. Um, and then it was uh, posted on Facebook. Um, we met with the property owners um, who had been before the commission um, multiple times and specifically multiple times for 52 North Pearl Street back in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe in September or August of 2018, they did receive approval for um, the design that was in the packet that I sent you. Um, when we met with them, the owners stated that they were unaware that they had received approval for that specific design that they had presented to us. Um, and then proceeded to construct a storefront that was never approved um, whatsoever. Uh, they have been issued a stop work order. So all work um, both interior and exterior um, has ceased. Um, they have no permissions um, or approvals to proceed. Um, uh, the, I told them that either they would have to reverse the work that they've done, go back and construct what was approved by the commission in 2018. Um, they told me that that was not an option. And so they are going back to the drawing board um, to put together a new design and they will be coming back to the HRC. So. Quite a story. What, what, they, what, what they proposed was a lousy design that we approved. And you know, and <laughs> you, had, you, had, you had photographic, you provided photographic documentation of historic, uh, historic storefronts. I know for the, is it 54? I don't know, the one on the right. Yeah. And the way that, it, that, that didn't even come out looking good. You know, it got those gooseneck lights. I, I mean, that, that was never part, uh, I'm just very um, saddened by the way that came out and all the hassle that we went through with these people and to for them to just say, well, I'm going to do it this way. And they have really, I don't know if they have an architect working with them or not, but the architect or whoever decided to come up with that design that's there now, it, they, they really missed the boat. Yeah. Um, they really did. I, it, I doesn't, it doesn't sound like they've worked with an architect for the current design, 
but I know when they were before the HRC in 2018, they were working with an architect because I had discussions not only with the property owners, but also with the designer or architect who was working on the plans for what mm -hmm. needed to be done. But I, I can't really give you any information on how the yeah, current design came about um, because they were unaware that they, what they even had approval for. Yeah. And that first floor, that's a very high first floor. I mean, it's, it, it, it takes up a good part of that facade. And to have it looking as horrible as it does, it just, it's sad. I mean, this is a historic district. I'm Albany, uh, downtown, uh, Albany City of Albany, downtown historic district. And it really sticks out like a sore thumb. I, I, when I looked at it, I, I looked at it. I block and get out the car and take some photos of it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. But anyway, no. well, hopefully we'll get it straight, you know. Aaron had the same reaction a couple months ago, so uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. we certainly yeah. look forward to them coming back and yeah. uh, see what they have to offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Norman, are you there? He's unmuted, but. Um, paychecks. <laughs> um, I believe they've been submitted to our purchasing department. Um, last, I have to follow, I'll follow up again with, um, the planner that submits those requests. All right, thank you, Aaron. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any yeah, other items to come before the commission? Or does it want to raise any other items? Oops. No. Was that a no? Nothing on my list. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. Oh, Chris, I know you can do it. All right. All those in favor, Bye. zoom out. Bye. 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 All right. Thank you all. Great. Thank Good you. Night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.